Hello everyone, welcome back to Pseudocoder, welcome back to chapter number 3 and today we are going to look at the third data structure under the Python collection data types which is sets. Okay, so let's get started. A uh, set is a collection of values and it is used to store multiple unique values. Now this is very important, it is used to store multiple unique values, okay, and the sets are un ordered so we'll look into what is unordered uh, in a second so let's see how can you define a set so it's going to be basically a variable name so suppose i have letters and then you have curly braces and here you can mention the letters that you want so it can be a combination of strings uh, you know integers floats booleans so it can be a combination of anything the best practice here would be to store only one type of uh, data type inside it and that's you know you usually stick to that is best practice so suppose here i have a b c this is one way of defining a set okay if i go ahead and print that so if i print letters i execute you can see that it gives me a b c let me make this a little bigger Okay, yeah, you can see it gives me back A, B, C. Now, there is another way of defining a set that is using the set constructor. Okay, so here what you can do is, suppose I have something called numbers and you can use set like that. Okay, so that is going to define a set for you. What if you want to add some values into the set? You can do that by basically adding a list in there. So for a list, we all know that it's going to be square brackets and then you give it values. So one, two, three. Now, if I try to print this and execute, you can see that now it has been converted to a set. So it is set is one, two, three. So these are the two types of how you can define a set. Now, here the main property of set here is that it stores unique values so for example here in letters say i repeat a so i repeat my string a what will happen now is that even if we have two instances of a it is only going to consider one so for example i will just execute it for you sorry i'll execute it again yeah you can see that it gives me b c a it even if we have two instances of a it is only going to consider one so that is a very important property of set that it is only going to store unique values now as we move forward we will see that we are going to add elements to the set even if we add a duplicate element it is not going to be added you will still have only one instance of it okay so that's something about set now uh, we saw that sets are unordered so what does that mean unordered means so basically what does order mean order means that a list has indices indices as mean each item inside the list is gonna have some kind of address some kind of index okay and using that index we can access that element now here in set it is unordered so you cannot really access it using indexes because the elements here even if we say that you know we can say we can see it's a b c and then a here it can print different values because it is not ordered it doesn't have any index assigned to where that particular item is gonna lie inside the set now that takes us to how to access the sets okay so now let's see how can you access items in the set now let me first let me get the same example okay i'm going to take this example all right so here I, as i told you it is not ordered so if we try to access it using the indexes now uh, you know similar to what we have done before in tuples and list it is going to give us an error so for example if i go ahead and print letters and then i try to print the uh, zeroth index i'm trying to get i'm trying to get the zeroth element the first element uh, inside the set i go ahead and execute this you can see that i get an error saying that set object is not subscriptable 
so that means that it is unordered and you cannot really use uh, you know an index to access the items now in this scenario how are you going to access the items here you can use the in operator so basically sets are used to you know uh, store something that is not duplicated store some data and have some visibility on it and we often go in and check if this particular item is in this set so that is a basic basic use of set so what you can do is you can use the in operator and we have seen this before so for example we can say if a in letters so this is going to work now if i print this out so if i print this out since a is in letters it should give us true you see we do not get an error because in operator works for sets so whenever you use sets and you want to check if a particular item is inside the set you can use the in operator and for example if i write z here and i execute this you can say it says false so we have seen in operators before as well and that is the only way uh, to access items inside the set let us now see how can you add to the set okay so here i have my set numbers and i have three items in it one two and three now if i want to add any additional numbers to this set i can use the dot add method so how it works is you write the set name so numbers and then dot add and here you write parentheses and then give the thing that you want to add so for example i want to add four so i add that and if i go and print this now i'll print numbers execute you can see that i get one two three four so i added four to it now if i add another number so i say i add five and i execute now you should see that it says one two three four five so this is one way of adding two sets now for example now let's take a scenario where you have two sets okay so i have numbers and suppose i have float values so let me say decimals because float is a keyword so i say decimals and i have 1.5 2.5 and 3.5 okay so what i want to do is i want to add these decimals to my numbers set so here you'll see that we cannot actually modify the existing uh, you know item in the set but what we can do is we can append new values so for example if i go ahead so let me uh, let me comment out so if i try to update any any item inside set it will give us an error so for example if i do numbers of zero and i try to change it to seven i execute it you can see that it says set object does not support item assignment that means you cannot really change the item inside a set but what you can do is you can append more items inside this set so for example i have these two sets with me i want to append all the uh, items inside the decimals set into my numbers set so how can i do that so the set where i want to append is numbers so numbers dot and i want to update that set so dot update in parentheses i give the name of the set from where i want to get my items so in this case it is decimals so what it will do is it will get all the items from decimal and update the numbers set with all those items so here i'm just going to print both i'm going to print numbers as well as my decimals set execute you can see that first i have printed numbers sorry first i printed first i have printed numbers so here you can see that it has one two three and then it has 1.5 2.5 and 3.5 whereas you can see that when i printed decimals it has only decimals that were there from the start so it did not update the decimals set it only updated the numbers set so these are the two ways that you can add to a set remember that you cannot modify the existing element that is there in this set okay so we have to move on and see how can we remove from the set now 
here I have a set letters and I have four items in it. Now, one way, the first method that we are going to look at is the dot remove method. Okay, so what we do here is we write the set name and then dot remove. And here in the parentheses, I mention the item that I want to remove. For example, if I try to remove A, A is going to be removed from this set. So let's quickly test that. I'm going to print the letters after I remove A. So if I click on execute, you can see that A has been removed and I'm left with C, D, B. As you can see, you know, it's really interesting uh, that uh, I have letters as A, B, C, D and it actually just rearranged them because it is unordered and this is a perfect example you know it has no indices so it is going it might give me a different print a different output all the time all right even if i just print the same set uh, so this is really cool i think uh, it's a good time it's good timing <laughs> okay so uh, the dot remove method one thing that you have to keep in mind is that when you use a dot remove method and a particular item is not there in the set it is going to raise an error so for example if i say i have i write z here and here i have only a b c d if i go ahead and execute you can see that it says key error z that happened because Z is not there in the set. So what if you don't know if that particular element is there, uh, there or not there in the set and if you don't want to check, you know, before removing it. So instead of dot remove, you can use a dot discard. So what happens with dot discard is that it checks if the element is not there. If the element is there, if it is there, it will remove it. Otherwise, it will just skip it. So for example, if I... Uh, if I instead of remove, I do discard and I do Z. Now I execute it. You see that it gave me back the same letters. It did not raise an error. Okay. And here we are going to just test with the elements that are already there in the set. I am removing A. I am discarding A. Execute. See, it has been removed. Okay, so keep in mind that dot remove raises an error if an item is not there in the set, whereas dot discard is a safer option. It will handle the exception. It is going to remove it only if the item is there. If not, it is just going to ignore it. Okay, now uh, the next method that we are going to look at is dot pop. Now you must already, you know, recollect that we used a dot pop in list. And in list, what we did is we used a dot pop to pop from, uh, you know, pop the latest item that we pushed onto the list. And we used index to pop the uh, particular element at that index. Okay. Here pop is different. When we use pop, it is going to remove a random item from the set. It is risky to use since you are going to just remove a random item and you don't know which item is removed. Uh, it is going to remove the random item and actually give you back. Okay. So here we can try to test that. Uh, we can do something like letters dot pop. So when I do letters dot pop, I execute this. It returns me A. Now let me see if I execute it again, it returns me B. As you can see, it is returning C. It returns me C again. So you can see that dot pop actually removes an item randomly from your set. So you have to be very, very careful if you are using dot pop method. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we are going to look at is dot clear. Now you can use dot clear if you want to just remove all the elements from the set. So here what I can do is letters dot clear if i do that and if i try to print that so i will just print letters and remove dot pop if i do that i click on execute you can see that it returns me back empty set so this is actually empty okay uh, so dot clear helps you to drop all the items inside the set it is similar to what list does now, what if you want to just delete the set altogether? You want to get rid of the set. What you will do is you will use the delete keyword. So D-E-L space and then the list name. So here the list name is, uh, sorry, the set name is letters. Okay. 
when I delete that, if I try to print it, it should give me an error saying that, you know, the letters set does not exist. Now, let me show you that I execute. It is saying name letters is not defined. That, and that is totally correct because we just deleted it. Okay. So these are all the methods that you can use to remove from the set. We all have studied sets in school and we know that whenever there is a set, it comes with unions and intersections. So we are going to quickly look into that as well. So Python provides some methods that we can use to do all those type of computations very, very easily. So here in join sets, the first thing that we are going to look at is union. Okay, so there is a dot union method inside the set. All right, so here, for example, I have two sets. I have say odd, so I have one, three, five, and I have even set. So let's say even and two, four, six. Okay, I have odd set, I have even number set. Now, what if I want to join both of them? So you can use a dot union method for that. What you have to do is Suppose I want a co uh, combined set, so I can do combined and then the first set, so or dot union and then the other set. So the other set is even. So when I do that, it will create a new set combined with all the items inside each of these sets. So let me go ahead and print that. Okay, so let's run it. You can see that we have a combined set which has both the values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Uh, now the second method that we kind of already looked at is a dot update method. Now you can you have to keep in mind this small uh, you know uh, difference between these two is that here you have used union. Dot union gives you back a new set. Okay. And the second method that we have is a dot update. Now dot update is used if you want to update one of the two sets with the other sets values. Okay. Just to make that clear, what I'm going to do is suppose I have, I want to update the odd set. I want to include all the elements from the even set into my odd set. What I will do is or dot update. So or dot update and then I do even. So when I do that, what it's going to do is it's going to take all the elements from the even set and add it to my odd set. And we already looked at this method. Okay. So if I go ahead and now print my odd set, as you already know what the output is going to be, it gives me back the odd set. So it's what it's doing is you, you have to, you know, keep this in mind is that the dot union method is going to return a new set that is going to be combined now in dot update what happens is it, it updates the odd set so let me just comment this out just to be clear so when i do a print or i'm going to print everything so let me print odd let me print even and we already printed combined but i just want to do it again so i do combine now i click on execute You'll see that it prints first the odd set, which is 135, then the even set, and then the combined set. So when I do a when a odd dot even or uh, odd dot union even, it created a new set without affecting the existing sets. Okay, so that is something that you have to keep in mind. Whereas in dot update, what it did is it updated the odd set. Uh, it took all the values from the even set and added them to the odd set. So if I uncomment this update part and I comment out this combined and I just want to get rid of combined because combined doesn't exist anymore. I execute. You can see that when I print odd, it has all the values from even and odd. And when I print even, it is unchanged. Okay. So that is the difference between the two. The second method that we have is the intersection method. So let me first grab these two sets I have and comment this out. Okay, so the next thing is what if you want to keep the duplicates only? Okay, so suppose I have even and or. Now this is not a good example. So I'm going to do numbers one and say 
numbers two so i have three five six and seven and here say i have two four six seven okay so what if i want to get only the common items from the two sets now here you can see that six and seven are the only common items from these two sets so what i can do is i can do numbers one dot intersection and then numbers two so what it will do it it will take all the common items from numbers one and numbers two and it will give me back a new set so what that set is going to be say i call it inter okay now let me go ahead and print that set oops okay so i'm going to print that out why okay because it says number it doesn't say numbers let me execute it again okay so here you can see that my intersect that is the intersection of my numbers one and numbers two has six and seven okay now what if i want to update my numbers one and have uh, have numbers one with only the common items only the common items between the two sets okay so here what i can do is numbers one dot intersection update so intersection update and then i do numbers two so numbers two so when i do that what happens is uh, it will take numbers two it will take the intersection of numbers one and numbers two and it will update numbers one with only the common values now if i print out numbers one I execute you will see that now numbers one has only the common items between the two sets so whenever you see a update inside method you should understand that it is going to update the underlying set okay it was similar to what we saw in union it was dot union and then dot update dot update was used when the particular set was updated here also in intersection update since it has the update keyword it is going to update the particular set okay so these are the two methods if you want to keep the duplicates only there is an one last method that python provides it if you want to keep all the elements but accept the duplicates one okay so let me take the same example let me copy the two numbers set we have so i do that let me comment this out move on to the last method we are going to look into so here it is going to uh, delete all the duplicates and give us all the unique items okay so here what i can do is let's say i have numbers and the method for it is if i want to get the uh you know unique items from both both the sets what i can do is numbers one dot symmetric difference okay oh sorry so it says symmetric difference and here i specify my second set so numbers two so numbers set is going to be going to have all the items except the duplicate items so let me do that so numbers okay so i execute you can see that it has one two three four five here six and seven were common so it dropped everything uh, it dropped those common elements and it gave us back one three five and two four so that is one three five two and four okay so that is the dot symmetric difference method now you might have probably already guessed what if you want to update one of the sets with all the unique items inside that set okay so how do you do that you can use a symmetric difference update method so how you do that is you do numbers one dot symmetric difference update and then you do numbers two so i do numbers two 
Now what it is going to do is it is going to update numbers one with all the unique items between two sets. All right. So let me just comment this out and I'm going to print now numbers one. So I execute this. You can see that now my numbers one was updated to one, two, three, four, five. That is all the unique values between the two sets. Uh, not the unique values, I would say uh, the values uh, that are not common between the two sets. Okay, um, so that is uh, the dot symmetric difference update method. Now here also you can just notice that it has updates. So that should click, you know, in your brain and say that, okay, it has updates. So it is going to update my existing set and not create a new set. Okay. So I hope this was helpful. The next data structure and the last data structure inside the Python collection data types is dictionaries. And we are going to see that in the upcoming video. If you like my videos, give it a thumbs up, comment below and let me know how you are liking these videos. I really, really look forward to your comments. This helps me keep motivated and, you know, work on all the media videos and, you know, just get that motivation <laughs> okay so uh so keep watching my videos subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more videos click on the bell icon if you want to get notified about the upcoming videos the dictionary video is gonna get up soon so check out for that and thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye